So today we are going to see effective length of column how we can calculate it from IS456 to 1000 in NXRE it is given so in NXRE's method is a proposed method by Wood in 1974 the method provided by Wood is also in used in uh, for steel sections it is also given in IS800 and, and effective length of steel columns and strut it also can be used so it is a good method vast method it is you can use it anywhere in concrete and steel also so mainly there are two categories to find out the effective length of column we have to first decide that which type of column it is so we have to decide for the non-sway it this column is non-sway or sway column so from those two categorization we, we can find out the different formulas and different cows for it to find out exit effective length of column and moreover why we are uh, bothered about this kind of effective length because in actual structure it uh, no column is totally uh, idealizedly pinned or hinged or you can say fixed uh, its rigidity and infixity will be depending on its stiffness column stiffness and end stiffness with connection of beam and also beam stiffness will also come into play so exit uh, partial stiffness of that beam or column uh, which will be going to be affected by around surrounding structure also it is uh, different instead of idealized uh, effective length if effective length is idealized we, uh, we, we generally do for both side hinge we will take one, one L but in actual structure it will behave differently so this is the method which can from which we can exactly find our structural members effective length like for columns only so for non sway frames effective length factor for column will be this k is, is equal to 1 uh, 1 plus 0 0.145 into bracket b1 plus b2 bracket close uh, minus 0 0.265 b1 into b2 and, uh, and in denominator is this, this value you can see and effective length factor for sway frames under root 1 minus 0.2 in bracket b1 plus b2 minus 0 0.12 b1 b2 uh, under <coughs> in denominator 1 on minus 0.8 b1 b2 plus 0.6 b1 b2 where b1 which is defined as uh, in b1 b2 there are uh, two things KC and KB. KC is in uh, column stiffness, it is I by L moment of inertia upon length of column, and B is the uh, effective beam th stiffness in flexor. So, and in IS456, it is also given that in B1 and B2 is equal to uh, sigma KC plus sig uh, under root uh, upon sigma KC plus sigma KB. Where the summation is to be done for the members framing into a joint at top and bottom respectively and KC and KB being flexural stiffness of column and beam respectively. So see this sigma indicates if uh, a column is connected with any num number of beams. So all the beams stiffness should be calculated to find the P1 and B2. So here you can see non-sway column and sway column. Both uh, uh, figures are you can see here. So Uh, in this non-sway column you can see uh, this is non-sway so its stiffness of beam the upper beam and lower will will be dif uh, different than this case so that's why it is uh, having some sway or non-sway so some of stiffness at top and bo or bottom we have to consider it same thing for sway we have to consider both the stiffness for it and it will affect the b1 and b2 constants so KC is uh, IC by LC, L is the upon uh, length of column, I is the moment of inertia of column, BD cube kept by 12 and KB for braced column, we braced column, braced means non-sway columns, uh, it is taken 1 by 2 IB by LB, it's in theory Wood has given that we have to consider this and for unbraced column we have to consider 1.5 into IB by LB. So we are finally coming to our uh, IS456-2000 annexure E. In this uh, clause, in this annexure, effective length of column is uh, all things are described and so things are given there. 
so in this this stability index this q is an stability index you can see it is also described in for is for first it is important from this factor from this index you can uh, uh, determine that uh, or you can find your column is a sway column or non sway column if q's value is less than 0.04 then the frame may be taken as no sway column because its stability index is good so that's why we are not taking as non uh, sway columns and if your value of q is coming more than uh, 0.04 then it is considered as sway column so according to that we will uh, put kb's value differently for braced mid columns means non sway column and uh, for unbraced means sway column so if k's value is uh, less than 0.04 or equal to 0.04 then the kb's value will be 0.5 into ib by lb if it is in a uh, sway column then it will be 1.5 into ib by lb if q's value is greater than 0.045 sorry 0.04 so these two figures are given in is456 which are this one is for effective length effective length ratio for a column in a frame with no sway this is no square column br uh, braced column you can also say similarly this uh, one more graph is given in is456 uh, it is for non sway column sorry effective length ratio for a column in a frame without resting against sway it is means it is a sway column for sway column they are given uh, so we are again coming to stability index stability index is the first step for uh, deciding your co column is sway or non sway according to you can just anal uh, decide your graph and just you can take beta 1 and beta 2 then you can find the k factor and you multiply with your length you will get effective length so first step should be uh, find out stability index stability in index is equal to summation of pu into uh, delta u upon hu hs so see here uh, sigma pu is the sum of actual loads on all columns in the story delta u is elas elastically computed first order lateral uh, deflection hs is the total lateral force acting on the story and the hs small hs is the height of story so in this delta u by hu will be this it is given in woods theory then also always refer woods theory it's good to understand all the concept and derivation of it so delta u by hu is a story drift per unit story shear you can see here in absorb of bracing elements the lateral flexibility measure to measure of the story delta u by hu it is actually it is story drift per unit storage shear we have to calculate that so hs square upon 12 ec sigma ic by hs and, um, and for beam ib by lb these two things will be changing and ec is the young's modulus of concrete which is going to be 5000 under root fck whichever type of concrete you are choosing so finally we will see one example so we can uh, know how to find it uh, actually calculate the effective length of column so we are taking one frame you can see in this figure uh, two bay frame with three meter three meter span and uh, two story three meter three meter height so center of center column with this terms will be three meter and this beam and this beams uh, uh, dimensions are 400 into 600 mm and column is 400 into 400 mm so for uh, unsupported length of column we have we have to we are taking center center distance so we have to deduct 300 from top and 300 from bottom so we will take 3000 minus 600 is equal to 2400 mm which is going to be our unsupported length of column and now we are finding sigma uh, ic upon ihs ihs is our uh, story height and ic is our moment of inertia for column so we are having three column in this frame so sorry stiffness relative stiffness we have to find for columns so that's why we are taking three here and this is bd cube by 12 by the columns length for similarly form for beam bd cube by 12 upon the span of beam 
it is also 3 meters that's why we are putting here 3000 mm so we will find that relatively stiffness moving ahead so our second step is to find the uh, <coughs> this thing storage drift per unit storage shear so, so we will find this here so units drift per unit storage shear let's find <coughs> Storage drift per unit story shear. So it is uh, small hs square upon 12 ec sigma ic upon hs. It's for column and it's for beam hs square upon 12 ec sigma ib upon lb. So hs our story height is 3000 uh, 3, mm and 12 ec ec is, is our uh, Young's modulus of concrete is 5000 under fck. We are considering 25. So 5000 in under root uh, 25 is 5 so it will be 25000 so uh, IC upon HS we already calculated in previous slide so we are putting it th those values directly here and we are calculating so we are getting this uh, value 4.33 into 10 to 6 mm per newton so PU will be uh, total load with factor load our load is given in here 100 kN per meter so we will factorize it with 1.5 and into 3 into 3 is the story height so uh, for 450 kN so we will we'll, uh, find stability index now so we are putting all these values here HU by HS we have found out sigma P we have found out for 3 means 3 columns that's why it is into 3 I am sorry and our story height sorry unsupported length of column is 2400 we have calculated in first step so q is there so q is less than uh, uh, 0 0.04 so our column is uh, without sway means no sway column is there so we, we are uh, find, finding beta 1 and beta 2 beta 2 will be sigma ic by hs and this formula is given there and we are using 0.5 ib by lb which which we have seen there why you have to use here or this column is our brace column so we will use kb is equal to 0.5 ib by lb so we are using it here and we will put all the values here and we will get beta and beta 2 values same because we are having a similar kind of frame in x and y direction if your frame is different in x and y direction beams depth or something is changing like effective mostly unsupported length will change in x and y direction so you have to Accordingly, we, we, you can find beta 1 and beta 2. It will change. So, beta 1 and beta 2 differ in those cases. In this case, we are taking similar. We are just considering one side and it, we are considering same in another. That's why beta 1 and beta 2 will be same here. So, from Wood's curves for column without sway or brace column, we can say effective uh, from figure 26 of IS4 we can easily take. And uh, which is 0 0.6 and 5 into 2 4 double 0 which will be this and from Wood's formula we, if you put this beta 1 and beta 2 value in this formula which is called Wood's formula we will, you will get directly k's value and you will you can just uh, multiply it with it so from this this value is taken from graph this value is coming very near to it so you can always use the graphs given in IS456 so it is very useful we will see how to take uh, values from the graph so, so this is graph our beta and beta 2 value is 0.45 sorry 0.47 so we are taking one line this is 0.5 this is 0.4 we are taking one line from 0.47 and we are taking line here from here 0.47 so you can see those two lines will coincide here somewhere and this value you can see here it is 0.675 so this value uh, we, you will get at the end of all the things which is k and you this multiplying factor you can multiply with your length uh, which is your actually unsupported length with unsupported length only you have to multiply your effective length factor you will get your effective length of column which is going to be actual effective length of column in your structure so in this way you can find the Effective length of column from IS456. It is also called as a Woods method to find the effective length of column. So uh, that's it. Thank you guys. Thank you for watching.